And I would like to bring some prospect to you. I mean, right now, the managed services as it stands right now are remote infrastructure management. None of the players, even the top players, not hold more than 10% of the, the total pie. So when you really go out and say, you know what, what, where are the mega deals going? I mean, they're happening. But, you know, are they happening at a scale where one of them is a, yeah, you know, you can really call and say, you know what, uh, IBM is a, is a, is a leader in, in here. You really can't go out and say that because, you know, the pie is so big and there's so many services that you can offer remotely. And it, so the issue is, you know, you're offering services and the scale is so wide, how do you really go out and categorize? So if you go out and just take one piece of the pie and say, you know, who's a real leader? I think you can go and say that. But when you go across the scale, um, deals are happening. They are, they're, they're, I mean, they are off. Uh, you, you, you can note those deals, but at the same time, it will not make you a true leader in the managed services space. Uh, as far as you know, what, your question of you know where you think the growth is happening, um, the analysts they're projecting that managed services is one of the area that things are really going to go out and take off. Managed services is a, is a space. Security is the one space where people are not really looking at giving it to. Uh, to, to, uh, to us or, you know, to IBMs, but that's something that people are finding it very, you know, it's very intensive, very complicated. You don't have the right skills to actually manage security, and it's, and it's of key value to actually secure your infrastructure, and that's where, where I think that huge growth is going to happen. And from a buying perspective as well, or from our perspective, um, we had multiple outsourcing deals in in a number of the geographies we operated in, what we wouldn't have done was taken all, you know, four or five different outsourcing contracts, move them into one relationship at one time from a risk perspective. So what you may have seen from us is, you know, a press release about us, you know, doing some work in the offshoring space, you know, not a big piece of work, but you, what you don't see subsequently is the growth that we look at and the strategy. And, you know, moving to, moving to a single provider or getting that scale um, also helps us from in interfaces and the handoffs. So we don't want, you know, a number of suppliers around the world providing them to us. We want to start, you know, dwindling, dwindling that number down. Um, and that's where we found ourselves into the market. Okay. Uh, one last thing I wanted to add was uh, if, if you look at IBM, for example, they, like I go to Paul's initial point, there are lots of hidden deals happening in the mega deals that IBM signs or HP signs, which their the back end is back in India, or the multinationals in the US, for example, are saying, I want to see the offshore capability. And they're asking for cost, cost arbitrage. And, and that's forcing, that's, f from an absolute perspective, the market is growing in India. If you look at, it's not happening with Indian vendors, but it's probably <coughs> happening with bigger, uh, like an IBM or an EDS. But they're getting deals based on their ability to do offshore. Yeah, I would agree with that. Hi, my name is Raj Kumar. I represent iNautics. My question to the panel is, what are the security concerns of the customer while outsourcing the infrastructure services? How you are addressing it? And what are the concerns that you anticipate from the customers with respect to the security side in the future? And uh, in terms of the risk, apart from the skill risk, with respect to the security side, people is also your risk. So what do you do? The, the quick answer before I turn it over to the panel is that most of the clients that I work with do not outsource or offshore the security functions. If they do, it's into a captive situation. Uh, would be, would, is the quick answer for most of the broad set of clients that I see. Now, I don't know specifically if, if you folks have, have turned responsibility for that over to third parties or, or not. What are the security concerns they have while outsourcing it? Because you are handling the, the infrastructure services. So what is the concern they have? And uh, how do you address it? And down the line, what concerns you anticipate in future? Because we anticipate in every business. Yeah. So from when we undertook our outsourcing decision a number of years ago when we were in the regional markets, we haven't seen that security 
analysis change just because we're now using offshoring partners. We, we manage the risk. We look at um, how the services are provided, their capabilities. We look at the people that they employ, and we retain, as Paul was saying, a number of our internal security functions so that we can monitor um, the performance of the providers. We can look at things like you know vulnerability or penetration tests that come in. So we, we don't see an increase of risk from our perspective that the service is being provided to us from an offshoring location. Um, to I think to answer your question, I think what you're looking at is more physical security concerns. Um, and Indian companies are pretty good at managing physical security and not allowing thumb drives into the facility and cameras and et cetera, et cetera. So physical security is uh, mitigated more by uh, having a physically air-gapped facility which uh, our network comes into that particular room and we audit anyone going in and out and make sure he is a person who's supposed to be into the, in, the, in that uh, facility. So um, uh, that, that kind of uh, mitigates that physical security risk. Uh, we perform random audits uh, uh, where we come in and uh, we look at the um, logs and things and just try to verify um, if the processes are being followed and who is connecting onto a network. Um, so, from a physical security perspective, it's not, um, it's, it's being managed pretty well today. Now, the long-term security concerns that would happen is, uh, or that might happen, is uh, maybe more stricter compliance requirements, uh, new regulations coming up uh, for export compliance, uh, which would potentially impact where the support is being done from. Um, if, if a, U.S. company has anything to do with uh, a defense product, then they have to meet different requirements, which potentially could impact uh, where the support is being done from. So right, right now, there's not any regulation, but uh, other than SOX, et cetera, if, if you're not dealing with the defense industry or with the government, then you're kind of safe. But there might be requirements coming up pretty soon, which will force a change. <laughs>